You are probably familiar with my love for Limon Arc. I put a video up a few weeks back with a good hunter build. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. Coming up is a build that someone suggested I try out. Shout out to the user Cheesy Bean who suggested to try this combination. It is filthy. Now, straight off the bat, I do apologise for the audio in this video. I've unfortunately, literally a few seconds ago, just broken my headset, so I'm going to have to go and buy a new one. Anyhow, if you have seen my Hunter version of this build, you probably know what is coming. For those of you that haven't, I will go over it. Trust me, it is worth it. The Hunter build is great, but this build is even more toxic in my opinion. This is a PvP review, so don't run into an endgame activity with this. So, the star of the show, Lemon Arc, long story short, is an exotic bow that, when an arrow is released after being fully drawn, poisons targets. Precision hits cause an explosion that poisons adversaries around the target. A precision hit does 152 damage, with the poison effect lasting about 3 seconds. That does 3 damage per tick. Then, we have my favourite hand cannon at the moment, the Steady Hand, the 120 rounds per minute weapon of the moment, obtainable in the Iron Banner. My roll comes with quick draw, which makes this lethal when combined with the bow. Due to its awful reload, I use backup mag, which gives me 11 rounds per mag. I will get to the armor and stats in a minute. The Hunter Exotic, Oathkeeper, allows bows to be held indefinitely. Unfortunately, Warlocks are, mm, well, Warlocks. Due to this, you will have to time your bow knocking. However, when timed right, unleash a shot and immediately swap to a hand cannon to finish off the target. They literally won't see it even coming. But Plasma, why would you choose a Hunter of a Warlock in PvP? Wait for it. All in good time. So far we have seen the basic gameplay. Time to complicate things a bit. Now, before I continue, if you're enjoying the content so far, please consider subscribing to my channel. I have developed a passion for doing this during the pandemic and want to keep going. You can drop me a comment, feedback also, as long as it's constructive. I will be investing in some new tech to get content out quicker, like replacing the bloody headset I just broke. So stay tuned. I also reply to all comments, so get in touch. Anyhow, moving on. If for whatever reason you don't have a 120 hand cannon uh, with quick draw, I present to you the Fidian Aspect. They are exotic gauntlets that boost your melee range and also your weapon handling, which means you're swapping between gun speed. This essentially grants your weapons quick draw. I'm using charge with light and high energy fire mods with this build too. If you are charged with light and hit a guardian in the head with the bow, you can literally hide away as you have just done 180 plus damage to the head with a lingering poison finishing the target off, as long as you time the knock correct. It's dirty. As you may know, I get called a cheat for using an actual good build by other players. It can be hilarious at times. Okay, so more improvements that we can make to this. Slot Charge Harvester. Avoid armor mod that can randomly charge you with light when getting killed or assists. Do bear in mind it reduces the governing stats of your class. In the case of Warlocks, this is recovery. For PvP, you always want to run max recovery. This will synergize with the stasis aspect of this build, and also running high strength. For you stasis enthusiasts that remember how broken Warlock stasis melee was when Beyond Light launched, you can imagine why. So, for the moment, you have the lethal blink in the eye, bow and hand cannon combo, and if you pick up orbs or get multiple assists or kills, you can essentially one-shot guardians and rain in the tears. Pretty cool so far. But, Plasma, how do I combat shotgunners and snipers? Now, along comes the stasis side of this build. Unlike hunters, <coughs> sorry, warlocks have rifts for class abilities, specifically empowering rifts. Sit in one and shoot a bow at a guardian. One shot, dead. Granted that you can use this on light subclasses too. Pair Wisp of Hedrons, the fragment that gives you a damage boost of 10 seconds when freezing targets. One shot, dead. I also use cold snap grenades for this, I tend to throw them around corners to freeze unsuspecting guardians. With max recovery you will get your rift back quicker. Position yourself in a corner, pop a rift and rain one shot poison arrows around the map. It's hilarious and fun to use. Shotgun Ape challenges you, freeze and mop that ape up. Now this build has made me unpopular with opposition players, including my hunter build for the same. People don't seem to like it when players have counters to everything they throw at you. That is, that's totally okay with me, but please don't be toxic about it. As much as I joke around about it getting hate messages etc, imagine you go up to a stranger in the street and then you attack them over their choice of clothes. You don't do it, so think before messaging others. Whilst the gameplay clips play out, let's talk about PvP, shall we? 
If you have been following my recent videos, I've been taking a break from PvP, and I used to be a PvP main. Hell, even my clanmates to some extent have stopped as well, whether that is playing PvE or other games altogether. I feel like Bungie at the moment have been ignoring the community feedback just a little bit when it comes to PvP. Season of the Chosen is coming out next week, and unless we are getting any surprises in the TWAB today, there are no planned new PvP maps launching, which is very disappointing. At least Arbalest is getting nerfed at some point next season, huh? We are getting new gear for Trials, which is exciting. I just hope they give us something worth the flawless card. The numbers don't lie, the population for Trials has dropped significantly this season, whether that's due to stasis or other things. It's not enjoyable playing top 1% players on your first two games of a card, so I'm not surprised at all in all honesty, due to the numbers. Free peeking is ruining the experience also, hopefully something gets done about this too in the near future. In terms of PvE, I just don't know. I was more excited about the Scorn Screed that appeared at the end of the trailer for next season than anything else. We have not seen the Scorn since Forsaken. We are due an encounter or two with them, and we also know that the Fanatic is still alive, so who knows. At least it seems we will have a lot more to do compared to Season of the Hunt, which didn't really offer much. However, the Beyond Light campaign softened that blow significantly. We are surprisingly getting a new strike with the next expansion and two Destiny 1 reprised strikes, so I guess this is new for some players? Plus, adept weapons are coming to GM Nightfalls later in the season. I can't wait to grind for a god roll palindrome. From a narrative perspective, I must say, Bungie are smashing it. Kayatul is here, the new Empress of the Cabal. Aldrin <coughs> Crow is hanging out with Zavala, which is interesting, and we are also getting new stasis aspects. Hunters need some love in that department, as we only have two fragment slots with the current two aspects that we do have. Anyhow, enough of my rambling, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I forgot to mention, with the season winding down, this Lemon Arc build still will be viable next season, so give it a try. Future videos include my go-to GM Nightfall build, that will likely be my next video. In the meantime, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in a future video. Have a good day, Guardians.